It is now my pleasure to introduce the Honourable Barry O'Farrell, the Premier of New South Wales. Ladies and gentlemen, to launch Reserve Forces Day for 2012, will you please welcome the Honourable Mr Barry O'Farrell, the Premier of New South Wales. Thank you, Bob, although I'm not sure why I was the only person whose age was revealed today. <laughs> So Lawrence, um, all of our distinguished guests, uh, across all three levels of government, and that is important, we have representatives of the federal government here, we have representatives of the state government, I'm pleased to be joined by not only the Honourable Fred Nile from the other place, uh, the other chamber in this place, but, uh, but by two of my colleagues uh, who have served as reservists, one of whom has served in the regular army, Charles Cassicelli from Stratfield and David Elliott from uh, Borkham Hills, there may well be other members of parliament here, I want to acknowledge uh, the other emergency services uh, that are here too, that day in, day out, and not only provide service to the state, but when you burrow in, you often find that their members uh, are sometimes members of our reserve forces. I want to acknowledge too, as others have today, uh, the fact that uh, uh, today's a day not just to thank the reservists, but their families, uh, and importantly, in front of General Brereton, uh, their employers. I was privileged earlier this uh, year to be down at Garden Island presenting awards to employers who do make uh, a tremendous sacrifice on behalf of the broader uh, nation uh, in allowing their staff to participate fully uh, as reservists. Um, I wanted to acknowledge the cadet unit which, uh, which has left the Barker Cadet Unit, uh, led by uh, the nephew of one of my colleagues from this place, from the other side of Parliament. Um, but whose RSM I have more than a fleeting uh, knowledge of. Uh, an absent RSM today who was rostered on for sport, which of course didn't occur, so he could have been here after all. <laughs> That's the way of cadets in military life. Uh, what reservists do is important. Reservists are uh, citizen soldiers. They've been citizen soldiers, whether as reservists or whether as citizens military forces uh, or, or militia, as they were once called. Uh, they have demonstrated what Senator Thistlethwaite describes as that volunteer spirit that exists in this country, and that's true. It's a volunteer spirit seen on our beaches, seen through organisations like the uh, SES, uh, and seen every day in communities across the nation. But this has been going on for more, of a, more than a generation, more than many generations, because, of course, reservists first started uh, back uh, in the 19th century. And that's what next year we will commemorate if not celebrate. We should celebrate uh, their, their volunteerism, we should celebrate uh, what they were fighting for, but we should commemorate uh, those who died and those who suffered, whether directly or whether, Sir Lawrence, in a story that perhaps is more poignant than you, uh, that you gave credit to, uh, that generation of women who, after every conflict, uh, never married but because of people lost, whether in the Boer War, the First World War, or subsequent wars. So next year we, we commemorate uh, the end of the Boer War. Next year we commemorate, I suppose, at the end of service of some of those who were sent by this place. So as you walk up those stairs today in a building that dates back to 1814, as you walk through that corridor before you came to the Honour Guard, you walk through on the left-hand side, or to the left-hand side is the original uh, parliamentary chamber of this place where uh, back in 1898, uh, a government led by a man called William Lyon, who today is acknowledged through the federal seat of Lyon in northern New South Wales, uh, committed himself to contribute to that 440,000 strong British force that served in the Boer War. Uh, amongst the first to uh, enlist for service were reservists in particular from country New South Wales. And it's said that those who formed the New South Wales Lancers from that first moment they fought at Belmont on the 19th of November in 1899, displayed not just their bush skills, but their ingenuity and the innovation that not only came to characterise their service in a number of theatres of war, but I think have come to characterise the Australian Defence Force around the world. Uh, what we know is from those first conflicts, uh, bravery and courage was shown. What we know is that in July of 1900, the first Australian received a Victoria Cross, a member of the Australian New South Wales Medical Corps, uh, in a battle, in a conflict, 
uh, that ultimately saw too many people uh, receive awards and honours uh, for doing extraordinary things as they continue to do in theatres of war today. As I was given the honour of, of inspecting the parade today, something that I'm a bit uncomfortable about as the, as the son of someone who only got to be a, a warrant officer, um, uh, I came to those descendants of uh, people who fought uh, for what wasn't Australia, but what were colonies, and then as they fought became Australia in that Boer War. And there's one gentleman there who had uh, uh, a Boer War medal with eight clasps on it. So of course, being the nosy politician that we all are, I went over to inquire, and yes, sure enough, uh, uh, Fred, Frederick Everard, Ever, Ever, Trooper Fred Everard, uh, enlisted at 19, uh, managed to get, uh, managed to see and to survive a number of those uh, battles that he was involved in, but was dead by the time he was 21. And regrettably, that is the price of, of war, but it's the price of war that, in a sense, is paid for all the right reasons, because we meet here in Australia's oldest parliament. We meet here in what is the birthplace of democracy in this country, a free country, a country where we are free to think what we want, uh, free to express most often what we want, as members of parliament know, uh, free to practice uh, the religion uh, of our choice, or not to practice the religion of our choice, uh, and we get to vote in those people who at local, state and federal government uh, get to govern us. That's ultimately what conflict and those who sign up to serve in conflicts uh, are on about. I think it's less about the adventure and more about the cause. And the cause is the just cause, whether uh, in the 19th century or whether today, ultimately it is about freedom and liberty, ultimately is about our way of life. And all those, who are, whether in the Boer War or whether in conflicts today, are trying to give to their children and their descendants the sort of opportunities that we've had so I'm delighted to be here. I'm delighted to accept an invitation from John Moore and from Lawrence Street uh, to officially launch uh, uh, Reserve Forces Day 2012, a day when we'll focus enormously on that contribution that those who fought in the Boer War made. But it's an opportunity to think, uh, particularly as someone, uh, uh, Air Marshal, who has Sir Wanaka and Depot in his electorate, to continue to think about the ongoing contribution that reservists make to Australia today.